Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. Um, you might remember my last video where I fixed my Revel Prion micro helicopter which had a broken gear and I did that by making a mould from a gear that was good in the helicopter and making a cast to replace the one that was broken. There is a video on this in my YouTube channel as well as a written article on my website. Somebody I know saw my video and Basically, now I have another helicopter to repair of his. Hi Pete, how are you doing? That helicopter is much more substantial though. This is uh, a proper helicopter. It's not as big as some of them, but it is, um, has a substantial battery and it has proper flight controls. It's a six channel helicopter. I've got the box here. It's a Twister version 2, which um, we're not sure what the make is, it just says Awesome RC Product by Model Engineers. Um, anyway, so it came with a whole bunch of spare bits, the spare rotors, as did the Revel. Um, but as with the Revel, that's not what's broken. So what we've actually got is just a broken, a broken tail, which uh, that was fixed on there. So, um, not such a bad thing, because we managed to get the spare part, which is this replacement stick which also has a hole in the middle helpfully to uh, run the wires down. The only issue is that um, basically the original stick isn't the same stick, it's actually moulded on both ends so it's snapped here but there's no sign of the middle piece coming out uh, and that's, that's also true for the piece attached to the helicopter. So um, although it looks like the stick, this is one that's definitely the right length there isn't actually a hole to put it in. So what we're gonna to have to do is cut this stick off um, and bore out a hole very precisely to put the new one in and run the wires down it and make sure it's all straight and level. So the first thing is to desolder the wires from the motor. Um, obviously we want it to spin the right way still when I put it back together. So I'm just going to mark the motor on the positive side with a little positive symbol and then I'll remember which way around it is. So I've got my soldering iron ready, and I'm just going to attempt to desolder these. There we go, and we can uh, pull those wires out um, through the tube. The other thing I've uh, managed to get hold of is actually a diagram of the whole helicopter. So it appears that the, the uh, tail boom is in fact a separate piece. It says it's carbon fibre and the replacement does feel very much like carbon fibre. Also you'll notice that it's broken catastrophically. If it were a piece of plastic it might crack or something. But this is shattered all the way down which is what carbon fibre does when it breaks. So it makes sense that actually they are separate pieces because the um, end of the tail is, is plastic so it must be bonded somewhere there and um, also the main chassis of the helicopter according to the parts diagram is one piece so there's no way that it um, unscrews in two halves to grip the tail boom so um, the tail boom being a different material there must be a join between them but um, if they're not molded together it looks like an incredibly uh, strong piece of glue so let's get the wires out and then I'll show you how I'm going to make the holes the right size for the new tail boom Right, so I've managed to get the wires out of that, the old tube. Um, as we can see, this is definitely carbon fibre. Um, it's completely broken to pieces now. I've pulled it off and it just snapped off there. The body, I'm fairly convinced, is plastic. So, um, basically, we just need to ream the holes out. And for that, I have this reamer, which is a uh, tool which sole purpose is to make holes bigger. So the basic plan is to start with the tail rotor because it's easy to get hold of and we should be able to uh, bore this out to make the new piece fit and hopefully lots of carbon fibre will fall out and eventually just leave me the piece of plastic um, and if I'm lucky the hole should be the right size to put the new one in and we can just glue it back in and then that'll be it.
Ooh, almost there. Of course, this will make the hole slightly tapered. So uh, if I make it too big, it doesn't matter because at some point in there will be the right size and then we can um, set it in there with some hot glue or similar. Yeah, that's just about it. I need to go a bit bigger. Um, and then we just need to do that at the other end and then we should be sorted. So I had to take the motor out of here because uh, my reamer was hitting the motor, which was mounted here. Just see the end of it. I've basically got that now to be the right size. So that oh, is a perfect fit, which is great. So probably hold itself without glue, although I'll put a bit of glue on it. Um, and hopefully everything's fine. So we'll just do the same the other end. Almost there. So I've run into a few problems with the reamer um, because my hole is too tapered because it's much deeper than the other one um, and it doesn't go through into anything. So this one actually goes through and then there's a gap. So that's seated quite well. But when I put it in here, um, it's quite hard. It's still a bit wobbly and I can't push it in far enough. And I don't want to um, make the outside of the hole much bigger than the inside. So basically I'm going to use this tool to try and cut the hole parallel, which is my Dremel with the rotary uh, kind of tool in it. Try that. Yeah, that feels better. That feels like I can get it in and it'll actually seat in there. So I just need to work on that a little bit more and then we need to run the wires through and glue it all back into place. Right, so that's back together. I haven't put the wires down, but I just wanted to make the point that um, basically this is a good mechanical repair. So this is quite solid. Um, it's also dead straight. Um, and I can push that thing right back inside uh, where the old one came from, we assume. So that's held without glue and it'd probably be fine. I'm going to use a bit of super glue just to um, hold those in place so they don't sort of vibrate and come out and then sometime in flight it all falls to pieces. So let's put those wires back down and solder the motor back on and then we should be sorted. So all I'm doing to glue this back on it's just a tiny dot, uh, spot of glue around here and then just push this back on. I've already done the helicopter end and basically push the wires down so just need to make sure that's dead straight. All the glue goes off. Yep, looks pretty good. Let's solder the wires back on and then we'll give it a test. Right, so here it is. Um, things seem to work. Now, this one's actually got a gyro in, which is quite good. So if I give it a little bit of throttle and I... Uh, Try and move it in this direction, the rotor moves by itself. Seems to have a bit of a wobble for some reason, so something's unbalanced. Um, which we need to have a look at. Obviously it has been crashed. But um, if I'm careful with the trim, and I can start to balance this up, it will actually take off. Have to find out where that wobble's coming from. But uh, basically, as we can see, we don't get the antenna stuck in the rotor. Make sure that's well away. You can see the rotor is obviously working fine. And um, the rotor control will make it turn. So, I'm not sure if that's a trim issue. Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, definitely needs balancing. Sometimes you have an issue flying too near the ground. And that's because obviously there's a um, bit of 
bit of a downdraft that causes turbulence. So the best thing to do is just to go for it. Yes, it would appear if we just go for it, then it works fine. That's all I have for this video.